Hello viewers, we are Moifosis Academy in Form 2. My name is Franklin Alobise. And on my right is... I'm John Kita. And I'm Dari Lenyang. Welcome to our, to our favorite program on Elimu TV, The Science Hub, where you get to learn and watch. And on, on today's discussion, we are going to, to another chapter, that is cha chapter 2 of Physics Form 2, which is Measurement 2. To start with, in measurement 1, that was in form 1, will the basic instrument that was used in uh, measuring length was a, was a meter rule. But in this chapter, in this chapter measurements, uh, measurements for objects such as the diameter of a test tube, the diameter of a wire will be used, will, will be measured using Vanaya's caliper and uh, micrometer screw gains. So, to start with, we are, uh, before we go on that, we also have different types of calipers. Yes. Yeah. So, so on, the, on the green board, we have the various types of calipers. We have the outside calipers, which has its jaw facing in the outside direction. It's used in measuring external diameter. We also have the inside caliper, which has, which has its jaws inclined inwards. And it's used in measuring the internal di diameters of things. And also to add on that, the both outside and the inside calipers all are collectively known as the engineer's calipers. Yeah, yeah. So, we shall also get to learn more about the micrometer screw gauge, which is used in measuring small diameters, the smallest diameters of instruments. Okay. So, we shall start by demonstrating on the use of a vanilla caliper. A vanilla caliper is divided into two scales. It has the, van, the main scale and the vanilla scale. So, the one which is moving, to add on that, the one which is moving is the vanilla scale. And the one which is stationary, this one, is the main scale. scale. And we also have the adjusting screw here. Yeah. So, before that, to add on that, we are, uh, in Vanya's caliper, yeah. we've got the, this is the fixed jaw, jaw, and then we have the sliding moving jaw. or the sliding yeah. jaw. Yes. So, in this case, as my colleague uh, uh, mentioned earlier, he said that we have, we have the outside jaw. This, no, I mean, these are the inside jaws, jaw. which are used to measure uh, internal diameter. yeah, diameters of object like uh, a test tube and we've got the outside jaws which are used to measure external outside diameters diameter. yeah so before we continue you can also say that the advantage of using vanilla scale calipers is that it can measure both inside and extra outside diameters yeah yeah, yeah. so on the vanilla scale on the vanilla calipers we shall also get to know of some calculation on how we can use we can use to get the diameters of very small or tiny objects. For example, this is a measuring cylinder. It's a cylindrical. We can obtain the diameter of this cylinder by use of a vanilla scale caliper. So we'll do this by inserting the the cylinder in, into between the jaws of the vanilla scale caliper. So we'll move the sliding jaw. So in between, in between, in in front of in front of this of this caliper is a scale. There's the main scale and the vanilla scale. The vanilla scale is the it's recorded is recorded here down, while the the main scale also is divided into one centimeter cube. In obtaining the diameter, we'll first use we'll first get to know about the least count. The least count is, get, is gotten by dividing, by subtracting the vanilla scale, the main scale minus the vanilla scale. And also, we shall talk about, more about the calculations. So, on the before, main before scale we go to that, that, before we go to that, uh, my colleague has said that we've got that, uh, uh, a term, a new term known as the least count, whereby he has said that least count is the difference between the main scale division and the vanilla scale division. So, uh, to, in order to get uh, the, the least count, 
the discount as I have said earlier is the difference between the main scale division and the one scale, scale division. division whereby the main scale is is graduated or is uh, calibrated into centimeters so centimeters are the units that we use when we are using various yes. calipers yes. so the vanier scale its length is 0 0.9 centimeters and and, it's, uh, and in, that, in, in that length we have division and in each division we have 0 0.09 yes. centimeters, uh, centimeters. Yeah. yeah so to get the least count we check the the length of one of one division of the main scale which is one centimeter we subtract from the length of the vanier caliper which is we subtract from the length of the vanier scale uh, vanier scale which is 0 0.9 whereby we, we are going to get our 0 0.01 centimeter which is our least count yeah So, in this chapter, you shall also get to know more about the zero error. There are two types of zero error. We have the positive zero error and the negative zero error, which my colleague Daryl Onyango is going to tell us more about the positive zero error. In the positive zero error, the zero mark of the main of the vanier scale is, is, is towards the right of the zero of the main scale. To show this, we can use a diagrammatic representation. So, as my my colleague has explained, that we've got to uh, uh, terms, uh, a term known as a zero error. And in, in this uh, zero error, we have different uh, we have two uh, different types of zero error. Whereby we have one of them is the positive zero error. And uh, to know to know whether you are uh, vanier caliper uh, as good uh, which kind of uh, zero error. To determine which kind of zero error is it uh, having, with, uh, as my, my colleague has said that positive zero error. Rabbi, to know whether you are qualified about uh, positive zero error, has said that the zero mark of the main scale, which is this, this is the main scale, this is the main scale, the zero mark of the main scale is on the right hand of the zero mark of the vanier scale. Yeah, that is the positive zero error. Yeah. And for you to eliminate the zero error, it means that your measurements in the zero error it means that your measurements will be less than the expected measurement. So to eliminate the zero error, you add what you got in the vanier in the main scale and what you got in the vanier scale plus the zero error that you give. Yeah. Okay. This shall be demonstrated more or illustrated further on calculations, which we shall learn in our next lesson. So we also have the negative zero error. The negative zero error has the main scale on its left, while the vanier scale, the zero mark on the vanier scale is on its, on its right. So our, my colleague John Peter shall illustrate it using a diagram. So, as my colleague Spencer has said, a negative zero error is, is, uh, is, is, uh, is occurs when the zero mark of the main scale is on the left side of the vanier or, or is on the left side of the zero mark of the vanier scale. That's when we, we say that we have got a negative zero error. And, where, and uh, in this case, when you are making your measurements, to get your correct measurement or the actual measurement of your object which you are, you are determining the measurement to correct the negative zero error you you subtract the the the, the measurement that you get you subtract the zero error yeah so having learned of the zero error and the positive zero error we shall get to learn of the oil drop experiment 
there are several ways of there are several ways of pre preparing or methods of preparing an oil drop experiment which we shall get also to learn on our next lesson okay so we have assumption assumptions of the oil drop experiment we have various assumptions one we can assume in carrying out an oil drop experiment we assume that the it we assume that the oil drop is spherical in shape secondly we also assume that the volume of the spherical of the spherical drop is equal to the volume of the circular patch what do you think about it dara i'm thinking that before we continue yeah. let's explain the point what what does it mean when you say oil drop experiment yeah. according to my point of view oil drop experiment this is an experiment carried out to determine the diameter of an oil drop and it's also used to determine the diameter of the oil patch when for example it spills over water and it's also used to determine the height of the oil patch when it spills over water so as we continue there are assumptions that we're going to make there are assumptions that we're going to make in this experiment as my colleague has said we have the we assume that first the oil drop is spherical when i'm measuring the diameter of that oil drop we assume that it is spherical in shape and we assume that when i i'm going to pour it on the like podium powder on the surface of the water it's going to form a circular patch so on that uh, my colleague has mentioned something to do with the lycopodium powder so you can you might be wondering what is this uh, lycopodium powder a lycopodium powder is, is a powder which when when you are uh, calculating or determining the measurement of the oil drop you spread on the surface of the water and uh, the uses of the lycopodium powder is that they they reduce the surface tension of the water thereby making the the oil oil drop to to spread uh, on its uh, maximum uh, diameter. yeah diameter yeah and also the lycopodium powder is used for easy visibility like for example if you pour oil over the surface of the water it will be very difficult to measure it in a meter so if you use the lycopodium powder it will be, make the oil to be visible therefore enhancing your calculations yeah, yeah. So you are you are to me that when, when when you pour the or you spread the lycopodium powder on the surface of the water and then you pour your oil drop, the it will it will bring this clear border between the water yeah. between the oil drop and then lycopodium. Yes. Thereby it will be it will enable you to take a measurement. Yeah. So there are also some few calculations and formulas which you shall get to also learn on the vigorous next lesson which shall involve calculations. So, we shall get to learn of these formulas, the volume of a spherical drop. It's 4 over 3 pi r cubic, which is used in getting the volume of a spherical drop. Yeah. But, in getting the volume of a spherical patch, we assume, we assume that the spherical drop is equal to the volume of the circular patch. The volume of the spherical volume drop of the is equal to the volume of the circular patch. patch. Yeah. yeah. So the volume of the circular patch is gotten by using pi r squared h. So h represents the height, pi represents 22 over 7, and the radius is the, the, is the is a half diameter of the circular patch while in the chain. So in, in conclusion, we shall get that volume is gotten by area out of height or area out of diameter we we shall get to learn these things more on our next, next lesson we will also get that height proportionally is equals to volume over area which we shall get to learn more on our next lesson so uh, before that yeah <coughs> the so before that uh, my viewer you might be wondering where are we where where, where uh, how, how my colleague has gone to this point for my colleague to come to this point, this is what he has done. Remember in one of the assumptions of the oil drop experiment, we say that the volume of the spherical drop is, is, uh, is uh, taken or assumed to be equal to the volume of the circular patch, which is formed on the surface of the water. Thereby, if this, 
if this volume on the spherical drop is equal to the circular part, then we say that this is the uh, at this point area of a, of a circular area of a circular part is given by pi r squared. Square. Pi r squared. Yes. So so this pi r squared is our area, right? Yes. This, that is our area. So in this case, this is area, right? Yes. Pi r squared is the and area. So in this case, we, we, the pi r squared is going to be uh, represented by pi a. n. That is an area. And the height, that is a volume. So volume is area of the circular part that so is the height or the yeah. size or the or thickness or diameter. So volume of the circular part is area times height. Yeah. Yeah. So in order to get the in order to get the height we substitute by dividing both sides by the area, the A. So we'll divide this side by A and divide the other side by A. So the A will here goes and the H remains. So it means that height is equal to volume over area, which means that height, our conclusion will finally be height is equal to volume over area. Yes. Thank you for watching our, your favorite program on Elimu TV, the Science Hub, where you get to watch and learn. Thank you.